Hello everyone, welcome back to That Tech Enthusiast podcast. Today we're going to be talking about some of the latest tech news, including Galaxy Fold um, Lite version, or well, there are a couple of different names and rumours going around about it. And then also, will the PS5 beat the Xbox Series X? Let's get started. Okay, so let's start off with the cheaper version of the Samsung Galaxy Fold. Um, this this could be interesting. So apparently, well, there are a bunch of different rumors going on about it, about what it could be, um, and things like that. So this is an article on TechRadar, and so let's start off with the price. So its price is going to be apparently one thousand. Uh, one hundred dollars, and I think that's about eight hundred and ninety. Yeah, eight hundred and ninety pounds, and then one thousand six hundred and ninety Australian dollars. So yeah, that's interesting. Um, I mean, it isn't. It still isn't a budget phone, but it's a bit closer to to a uh, flagship price. So I guess that's a plus. Um, because you know the the original one is way too expensive to be completely honest um right so yeah there are a bunch of different rumors going on so i'll read out there's a tweet by someone called max i can't say that surname i don't know how to say that wine batch i don't know but he says well he tweeted out he had some info on the galaxy fold light so i'm assuming he uh, thinks it's going to be called the Galaxy Fold Lite, but some people also think it might be called the Galaxy Fold E. Um, but anyway, I'll read out what he said. So, it's not going to have 5G, it'll only have 4G, although I believe the current uh, Fold Lite also only has um, 4G. Or actually, no, it might have 5G. Uh, I'll check that afterwards. Um, the colours are mirror black and mirror purple. I think that's the same for the Z Flip and the Fold as well. Will be equipped with a mix of 2018, uh, 2019 and 2020 parts, so you know the process and stuff, uh, all different from different years. And the outside display will have probably a smaller display, so a bit like on the Z Flip. I think it'd be cool to sort of well, because I guess the display was quite small anyway, and you couldn't... Obviously, I never used it, but I can't really... Like, from what I've seen, it doesn't really look like you could do that much with it, with that size display. Especially because of the... Um, the, like, aspect ratio, kind of, of it. How many apps would actually support... Because it was a square, wasn't it? It's been a while since I've talked about the fold. Well, I well, but it was before I had the before I did this podcast, but it's been a while since I really thought about it or heard anyone else talk about it because honestly, it's just I feel like it's kind of been forgotten. Um oh no, never mind. The screen is completely not what I thought it was. So the screen on the fold Okay, yeah. For some reason, I thought the screen on the Fold was, like, square, and I, I assumed that most apps probably wouldn't support a square, like a perfect square. Like, um, for an example, if you have an Android tablet... <coughs> sorry. If you have an Android tablet that's a square, you um, sometimes might find apps will put two massive black lines, border things, uh, to make it more rectangle shape but anyway back to the fold light uh the display has no utg it will oh no have i already yeah outside will probably have some yeah i've read that all that stuff okay right other things so right so a current another rumor is that it might be having a bunch of the first of the original Galaxy Folds design, and I'm assuming this article means 
of a Galaxy Fold that broke those similar designs to those, which doesn't really make sense because I know it's a cheaper version, but I wouldn't make it so it breaks, you know what I'm saying? Like, hmm, that that might not be the best decision. Um, Right, so who was it? CEO Ross Young of Display Supply Chain Consultants tweeted out that the Galaxy Fold special that it, it <laughs> I can't speak, he claims it will be called the Galaxy Fold Special Edition instead of the Galaxy Fold Lite and it will be announced in July. I can't find this tweet by the way. Um, I also don't have Twitter so that does make it a lot harder to find. Um, although it is no, it isn't. So the last tweet that I read by the, uh, by Max Weinbach, I'm still not sure if I'm saying that his name right. Um, I don't. His tweet was integrated into the article, unless it was a photo. No, that is a uh, integrated. What's it called? Embedded into the article. Whereas this tweet isn't, which makes me think it might have been taken down, possibly, because maybe he's leaked it. I'm not sure though, because he is also a CEO of Display Supply chain and you know you'd assume the ceos don't normally leak stuff but you know (laughs) you never know but anyway apparently also quantities will be limited to 55k worldwide and it will look like the galaxy fold one um because another rumor is that it's gonna oh wait no i've already said that (laughs) forgetting what i've said so they also, some people might be thinking that they have, so the they're doing this because they want to clear out the Galaxy, the, the Galaxy Fold design, no, Galaxy Fold inventory before the Fold 2 is launched. So like the, the actual folds that you can buy right now, clear out those. So get them kind of like refurbished and I think, do they mean like recycling them and then just to get rid of them. I think that's what I think that's what this article means. But yeah, um that's interesting. That is very interesting. I can't remember if I talked about it by the way, but Huawei actually launched a new folding phone uh a while ago and I think it was called the um Huawei X S because they have the X, but that's only in China, I think. Or it's very limited to where you can actually get it from. Which is interesting. Because the XS, actually, you can get it in way more countries now. All of the major ones, I think. I think you can get it in the UK. Although, I'm not rich enough to buy a folding phone. Okay. Right, moving on to some gaming stuff, some gaming consoles. So, will the PS5 beat the Xbox Series X in sales? Sony sounds confidence. This is by Samuel Roberts on Tech Radar once again, 15 hours ago. Um, I don't really think, first of all, this is my opinion. I've obviously already read the article, so I can just real quickly say my opinion. I don't think that you can really predict it because, okay, because um, Sony haven't actually really given us too much information about the PS5. Like, obviously, they showed us the logo, but they haven't really seen. I don't think have we even had specs. Maybe we have had specs, and I've like missed them. To be to be completely honest, I probably have. Um, but you like there's no specs on this thing so i think most of the things that we've seen are just leaks but anyway i think that we need the only way you you can't predict this sort of thing basically because like at the last second they might announce something that they've been keeping secret for a while that will be a massive game changer into who wins PS5 versus Xbox Series X. Um, you never know. Okay. I'm personally a PS PlayStation person. Um, 
Although, to be honest, if I had the choice, I would probably buy an Xbox because most of my friends' ch uh, choice of console is an Xbox. But, no, I have a PS4. Um, but anyway, Sony sound pretty confident, apparently, about the sales of PS5. So, there was a call with Sony CFO... Uh, I can't say that name. Hiroki Totoki, maybe? I'm not sure. And he was asked directly about the PS5 marketing strategy and whether it's falling behind Xbox. He, he was specifically asked if he'd give a passing grade to what PlayStation had done. The answer was pretty clear. The sales will ultimately, ultimately decide. First of all, I very much doubt that he would say, oh, well, actually, I think Xbox are kind of going to beat us. Because... No company is going to say that. So this article, that in, that entire, that question of that um, interview was completely pointless because it's not like he's going to say, actually, yeah, the Xbox, it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of better than the PS5. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think we're going to win that. That Nobody is going to say that from Sony because why would they? <laughs> or not publicly anyway. Like, I don't know, maybe privately, but definitely not, you know. What? So you know that that's just a bit pointless. Um, there's a tweet. We consider things strategically, but doing our best. As for pass or fail, I would wait for PS5 sales to make that judgment. Um, uh, that's according to a tweet from Bloomberg's Takashi. Mm, oh, I, can't, I actually can't say that surname. I can never say names. I don't want to get it wrong and offend someone. That's that's my problem, I think. But anyway, um, so let's just compare this to the PS4. It was revealed in February 2013 and then released in November 2013. So the actual release date of the PS5 is non-existent. It will apparently is going to be in... Apparently what was it, uh, holiday 2020, so people are assuming that means October, November, December time in, in 2020, so I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens there, because, yeah, I don't know, I hear most people saying that, that they're going to get the Xbox, but then how much information have we had on the PS5, because I think a lot of this stuff are leaks, unless I've missed something. Okay, our next topic. Um, oh, I have just pressed on an ad. There goes all my money. Right, so Apple have acquired Next VR. Um, what is? I've never heard of Next VR to be completely honest. I don't know if it's a. Unless oh, are they the? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, uh, okay, right. So Apple have confirmed to Bloomberg that it has acquired Next VR, and it is a company that. Pr oh, I see. Okay, and it's a company that primarily makes sports-related content and experiences for virtual reality, and it is in based in Southern California. So, Apple have acquired Next VR this um sport related virtual reality thing and um apparently this was rumored last month and we don't know how much uh we don't know how much the it actually cost for apple to buy it but people are expecting it to be about 100 million dollars and uh, Next VR stopped op stopped operating as its own entity last week, and if you actually go to the website, you'll see that. So nextvr.com, you'll see that it's just a page, and I'll put an image on screen if you're watching on YouTube that just says, "Next VR is heading in a new direction." Thank you to all our partners and fans around the world for the role you played in building this awesome platform for sports, music, and entertainment experiences in virtual reality. So. Apple and VR support, 
let's just talk about that real quickly. So it has support for the well, a couple of years ago apparently they added support in macOS for uh, the HTC Vive headsets, and apparently they can be used in Final Cut Pro, which is which is kind of cool. Um, and then they also have support from Valve's Steam VR platform, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, apparently that's pretty much it. And oh, actually, Steam VR also recently ended support for macOS. So yeah, you know, basically not that much VR options if you're on a Mac. Um, but. I don't know, Max and gaming, just saying. Um, right. So, yeah, they have got this next VR thing. Um, this company. Does that mean that they are going to be doing some VR stuff? Like, can we just imagine an Apple VR? Or I'm assuming it will still be under the next VR branding. I'd assume. Um, I think there might have actually been rumours for an Apple VR headset a while ago. In oh, oh, ooh. in 2018, there were rumours. I have just found an article that in 2018, there were rumours for Apple VR glasses with AR powers to be the next big thing in 2018 on May the 18th. On Tech Radar by Michael Hicks. Interesting, 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 interesting. So, yeah, this is actually. I'm genuinely interested in what they're going to do here, because this is possibly even around the time that that they uh, still supported the Steam VR as well. Oh, I did not realise this. So yeah, they were it was rumoured that they were gonna make a VR headset. So maybe this is what those rumours pointed towards unless they were just false rumours of somebody like thinking, hey, it'd be really cool to um although I doubt it was this, maybe somebody thought, hey, it'd be really cool if Apple made a if Apple made a VR, I'm gonna start spreading a fake rumour that Apple are making VR. But I doubt someone did that, or I hope someone didn't, because that would just kind of be annoying. So, this is interesting, honestly. I'm very surprised, because, you know, they didn't exactly make... They didn't exactly have lots of support for VR, and I don't really think... I don't know, Apple have so much stuff now they have an entire ecosystem and this next vr is probably just going to add to it to be honest um but you know apple oh i have just knocked over my microphone i'm very sorry if that was a loud noise but you know it is what it is nintendo Next, next up, we're going for Nintendo, because, yeah, why not? I have a Nintendo Switch, um, just saying. I like it. I haven't played Animal Crossing, actually. Right, okay. I just need to get something out. Animal Crossing. Why is everyone liking it so much? Because I honestly, I don't, honestly don't understand why. I've not played it. I don't want to play it, because I've seen it. I have seen people playing it, and honestly, it does not look as good as people are hyping it up. And I think it's actually because it's a new game. Uh, there's is a fan base that do like it, which I respect. And I don't, yeah. I just, so yeah, I respect that there's a fan base, and I think those fans played it. Um. Other people that might not normally have played it decided to play it. And then, because everyone is in quarantine, they're playing it a lot more than they would normally anyway. And so, because it's a new game, and it actually seems like there's a decent amount of stuff to do in it, uh, people aren't really getting bored of it, and so they're saying that they like it. That is my theory of why people like Animal Crossing. I'm not one of those people. I'm not falling in the trap. Right, okay, so... 
this isn't that isn't what I wanted us to talk about, but I, I just needed to get that out of the way. So Nintendo is developing a new mobile game, uh, although it hasn't announced anything yet. But I'm sure at some point it will. Well, you think it would. So let's just think about the games that they do have uh, on mobile, real quickly. So they have got. They've got a couple of stuff. They've got Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, Dr. Mario World, uh, Super Mario Run, uh, Mario Kart Tour. I remember when that... Oh, yeah, I got Mario Kart Tour, I think. Yeah, I did get Mario... Well, it's free, so I downloaded it. But, yeah, I got Mario Kart Tour, although I never really played it because motion controls. Um, There's also... Dra- drag okay. oh, I can't say some things here. Drag Dragalia Lost. Okay, why can't I say that? And then Fire Emblem Heroes, uh, which apparently are also Nintendo games that are on mobile. And did I say Doctor Mario World? I don't know if I did, but there you go. That's on there as well. But apparently they're going to be getting some more. I didn't even realize they had this much. Like. So, I knew they had Super Mario Run, and I knew they had Mario Kart Tour. I knew they had Dr. Mario World, because I'd seen it, but never actually downloaded it. Uh, and, but I didn't know they had an Animal Crossing game. Although, I think it's like a guide. You know, like you get apps sometimes that say guides. Um, for for an example, Legends of Zelda, you get um, like guides and companions for that. Uh, as a smartphone app, I think that that is the sort of thing that this Animal Crossing Pocket Camp is. But I don't know, because I don't play Animal Crossing. But I've already said that, right? So they have been developing a game on a smartphone, maybe even a few. Um. Oh, there was a. Nintendo's Q&A summary, so I'll just read this out. Considering how we will position our mobile business in the future, we are not necessarily looking to continue releasing many new applications for mobile market as much as we are looking at the continuation of our mobile business as a way to make active use of Nintendo IP, game characters, game characters even, worlds and so on in the interest of maximizing entirely Nintendo's business. For us, the direct purpose of releasing mobile applications is to bring games that use Nintendo IP to the large install base of smart devices worldwide, bringing more consumers into contact with the world of Nintendo games, and also bringing ongoing services to fans of individual Nintendo IP on mobile platforms. Basically, they kind yeah, okay. There's that. Also, just a real quick side note, this isn't an article, this is just me and my own knowledge. So, I think it was actually rumoured beforehand, but WhatsApp have now added in support for eight people to be on a video call at once, uh, as long as all the participants are using uh, the latest version of WhatsApp, then there can be eight people on a video call. Uh, so obviously that's probably because I imagine WhatsApp video calls have actually gone up in popularity um, in that everybody's at home and they kind of want to want to still be able to communicate and you know most people have WhatsApp so you know WhatsApp video calls is their, is their way to solve it um, I mean I've used it I've used it uh, I did one with my friends a couple of days ago um, I've done ones with my family, uh, uh, especially right at the start, we did it a lot. Not as much now, but we st- we still do, we still do. Um, yeah. That is, yeah, I just wanted to add that in, I don't really know why. <laughs> I just felt like talking about it. Um, so I'm assuming that that could indicate that there actually has been a rise in the amount of people using WhatsApp video. But anyway, to be fair, that, that's kind of expected. Um, but anyway, that is all we've got time for today. Hope you enjoyed, hope you enjoyed the, this episode. 
I couldn't think of the word then. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my second channel, The Alien Doctor, on YouTube. Um, follow me on Instagram at that tech enthusiast. Um, if you have any questions, email me that dot tech dot enthusiast at gmail dot com. And yeah, thanks for listening. Bye.